Hi, my name is Sandy, joint owner of Filipino Jewelries and Crafts. The video tells the story of the first special project undertaken by Filipino Jewelries and Crafts. In early June 2012, we received an email from Jeff of North Carolina via Alabama asking for further information on the Camagong jewelry box on our website. This was the first of many emails backwards and forwards as we tried to formulate a specification that was achievable and cost effective. Jeff had specific requirements. Camagong wood half inch thick as his project was to hand carve, inlay and finish a jewellery box for his new wife with a double door similar in style to a wardrobe so that she could lay out her necklaces. The major problem with his specification was that there is a worldwide shortage of Camagong wood half inch thick and the length needed to make the size of box he wanted. There were a number of reasons he was willing to go to such lengths to buy a Camagong jewellery box, despite my attempts to convert him to another hardwood like mahogany. He loved its density and strength. He had several Kali sticks and sandata with handles made from Camagong. He particularly liked the colour and grain of Camagong. In particular, the blackness of the wood shown in our jewellery boxes. The inlay he was planning to do was of horses made of a metal known as shakudo. This is a copper gold alloy with a black patina finish so that the oily blackness of the camagong will be subtly different from the black matte finish of the metal horses. Jeff talked about using five or six of my jewellery boxes to assemble a box. I sent him one of them for him to investigate the feasibility of that. In the meantime, Rain and I set out to try and find a wood carver who had access to Camagong wood of the correct size. I made contact with one of our suppliers in Baggio who indicated that he could not get access to wood that thickness and length. He however suggested we try Paete Laguna. We contacted a friend from Laguna who went to Paete and found a wood carver who to make the jewellery box not from one piece of Camagong but by joining several pieces to get the right dimensions Jeff was looking for. The price of 9,500 pesos was too expensive and above the a budget I'd agreed initially with Jeff. There are a couple of alternatives that we could look at first before committing to this wood cover. Javier, about 35 kilometers from Dulag, where there was a possibility of Camagong wood of the correct length and thickness. Unfortunately, the only thing that we collected was a very sore backside for me as the roads had many potholes and were unmade as we went through the rice fields. Rain suggested her and her friend Tita would go to Samar, which is a large number of craftsmen who make furniture and small items from mahogany and camagong. They set out on the journey and got as far as the San Juanico Bridge, where they got stopped by the PMP. Neither of them has a professional license for a motorbike, which means that they should have a professional driver with them, a qualified one. In true Filipina fashion, Tita used her female charms on the male officer and they were allowed to continue. They found a wood carver who would make the jewellery box in one piece from Camagong wood. In, in addition, they found a lovely resort where they had lunch. Filipinos need fed every few hours, something I learned several learned first time I went there. 
This picture shows the hotel, at the resort, the swimming pool. Next two pictures of Tita at the resort. Rain at the resort. They arranged for the completed jewellery box to be collected in four days. Jeff gave approval to go ahead with the box from summer. The day that we got a text saying the jewellery box was ready, I went with Rain sitting on the back of the motorbike with strict instructions to keep my helmet down and wearing a long sleeve sweatshirt. Imagine wearing a sweatshirt in 30 degrees of heat. For goodness sake, it was not Scotland. All this was to hide the fact that I was white skinned. What a waste of time, as you will learn later. We set her at 6 in the morning, hoping to avoid the PMP roadblock. However, as we reached the San Monico Bridge, there they were again. But my international driving license covered me as a professional qualified driver. Mind you, glad they did not ask me to drive the bike. A more a four-wheeled man, I might have knocked the poor guy down. We were back on our way at the San Juanico Bridge. The photo below was taken with me hanging off the bike if Rain's head kept getting in the way. We got to the other side and were driving through the army checkpoint when one of the soldiers shouted, Hi Joe, have a good day. So much for Ian's disguise. Still stuck out like a sore thumb. All white people are called Joe, as Filipinos assume all whites are American. Even the kids will greet you, hi Americano. However, I've now learned the Filipino to counter this, Hindi po Americano, I'm not an American. It was here that it got a bit scary. The roads were deserted, unlike later. This motorbike started to follow us, and every time we speeded up, so did it. And every time we slowed down, so did it, keeping a distance about 50 metres from us. Well, not till after did I realise that Rain and I were thinking the same, an escape route, or how to deal with the situation if he came alongside and tried to put us off the road. This went on for about 30 minutes. Eventually he speeded up and passed us and we never saw him again. I was thinking if he comes alongside, can I get him off the bike? I have to say that Rain's description of the resort where we had lunch was spot on and photos show Ian wearing a sweatshirt. Oh, how I would have loved to go for a swim. The side of the pool, Rain on the motorbike outside the resort, our mode of transport in the Philippines. Ian again at the side of the pool. Ian, Rain holding her ha hands up to heaven. Goodness knows what she's thinking. Want to go for a swim? We collected the jewellery box and headed back to Dulag with no further incidents. The picture below shows the finished box prior to shipping to the States. The next problem was finding a shipper to send the box to North Carolina. Carmagon wood is very heavy and the box plus packaging materials weighed nearly 7 kilos. Jeff agreed on using UPS, a carrier I have used in the past for shipping from the Philippines. The jewellery box arrived in North Carolina two days later in one piece and Jeff and Casey were pleased with the box. Project successfully completed although Jeff has still to hand carve and finish for the box. We are now in a position to undertake one-off projects like this. For further information contact Rain or Ian at sales at filipinojewelleriesandcrafts.co.uk